This will be Honors Geometry Chapter 10 Review of Circles. One of the first things we talked about in Chapter 10 were the different segments of a circle. Remember that a segment that intersects a circle twice is called a secant segment. So in this diagram, segment AB is a secant. A segment that intersects a circle just once is called a tangent segment. So in this diagram, CD is a tangent segment. Remember that if a radius is drawn to the point of contact with the tangent, then it always forms a right angle. Another important relationship is the idea of concentric circles. Concentric circles have the same center. If they have the same center, kind of creates a bull's eye shape. So circles with the same center, there's lots of different relationships that we can build upon. One of the common uses of the concentric circles application was in reference to a segment that was a tangent to the smaller circle and a chord of the larger circle. So that might look something like this. This blue segment is a chord of the larger circle but is intersecting the smaller circle just once and is tangent to it. Remember that if a radius is drawn to that point of contact, it can create a right angle. So the radius of the smaller circle, the radius of the larger circle, and then half of the chord would create a right triangle, and you would have the ability to use Pythagorean theorem to fill in and find missing information in that case. Moving on to the angles of a circle. Angles of a circle, their measures depend on the arcs that they intersect. There are essentially four different types of angles. The first is an angle whose vertex is located at the center, known as a central angle. When the vertex is at the center, then the angle measure equals the arc measure. So the central angle in this diagram would be 92 degrees. When the vertex of the angle is located on the circle, so on the circle, then the angle is exactly half of the intercepted arc measure. So in this diagram, again, if that intercepted arc is 92, then the angle measure would be 46. When the angle has a vertex inside the circle, not at the center, then the angle measure equals one half the sum of both intercepted arcs. So that would be the intercepted arc of the angle itself as well as the intercepted arc of the vertical angle's arc. So remember, these, this pair here are vertical angles and they would be congruent. So in this diagram, the angle measure would be equal to one half the sum of 30 degrees plus 40 degrees. In other words, the angle measure would be 35 degrees. And finally, the last case is when the vertex is outside the circle. You again have two intercepted arcs, but this time the measure of the angle is half the intercepted arcs. So the angle measure would be one half of 40 minus 10. So it's half of the difference of the two arcs. So in this diagram, the angle measure that's formed by the intersecting, intersecting secants would be one half of 40 minus 10, or 15 degrees. And finally, one of the final things we talked about in chapter 10 was the power theorems. There were three different power theorems. When two chords intersect, the product of the pieces of the chords are equal. So if I label this chord's pieces A and B, and the other chords pieces C and D, then the chord-chord power theorem would say that A times B equals C times D. The second power theorem is when two secants intersect outside a circle. Again, there are different pieces that are formed. If I label the outside pieces X and Y, and then the entire secants themselves, A and B, then the secant-secant power theorem says that the length of the whole chord times its outer piece is equal to the other length. That should be secant, not chord. So the length of the entire secant times its outer piece equals the length of the other secant times its outer piece. So in this diagram, that would be A times X equals B times Y. 
Again, remember to use the entire length of the secant, not the second piece. And finally, the last power theorem is the secant tangent power theorem, which says that the length of the tangent squared is equal to the whole secant times the outer piece. So if I call the tangent D, the outer part of the secant E, and the whole secant F, the power theorem would say that D squared equals E times the whole secant F. So let's do one practice problem. It says find the length of the radius of a circle if the distance to a 48 meter cord is 12 meters less than the radius. So remember when you're working with cords and radii and distance to cords, you typically are going to use Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to draw the segment that would represent the distance to the cord. Remember the theorem that it would bisect the cord and of course it's going to be perpendicular. So you want to draw the radius to the end point of the cord, creating a right triangle. Since the radius is what we want to find, we will call that piece x. We know that the distance to the cord is 12 meters less than the radius. So if the radius is x, then that distance is going to be x minus 12. And finally, if the whole cord is 48, then half of the cord, which would be one of the legs of the right triangle, would be 24. So if we make a bigger diagram of that right triangle, we've got a hypotenuse x, a leg of x minus 12, and another leg of 24. We can apply the Pythagorean theorem to solve the quantity of x minus 12 squared plus 24 squared equals x squared. To FOIL x minus 12, you would end up with x squared minus 12x minus 12x plus 144 plus 24 squared, which is 576, equals x squared. The equation looks a little complicated. However, the x squareds would cancel each other out since they are on opposite sides of the equation. Combining like terms, we'll get negative 24x, and that would equal negative 24x would equal a negative 720, if you combined your like terms and brought them to the opposite side of the equation, divide both sides by negative 24, and you will find that x, which represents the length of the radius, is 30 meters.